Cheers, Eddie Buckaroos. How the heck are you? I was blasting some Christmas music, believe it or not. <laughs> Bob McCartney, man. Simply having a wonderful Christmas time. Anyway, uh, anyway, I digress. So here's what I got here, man. I got one from Hungry Hollow out of Cassville, Missouri. This is from this limited release. Uh, bourbon barrel aged porter from the limited release from their fully fluted series Cumberland barrel aged porter. It is 13 percent. Yeah, that's a big bad boy, man uh, and It runs. Well, it's not cheap. It runs about 17 and a half for a 750 Again, yeah, not cheap, but I've you know, I, I've seen more expensive barrel aged brews and this is a very small batch beer So there you go uh, The rarest of the rare just like the brew the fully fluted Cumberland Points age is what makes it a killer fine. Rich porter aged in bourbon barrels with vanilla bean and brown sugar. Okay. Porter aged in bourbon barrels with vanilla bean and brown sugar. Okay, so they're going for a big, rich, sweet, decadent porter here, man. <laughs> I'm going to say chocolate. I thought this one had chocolate, but I guess not. Uh, porter aged bourbon barrel, vanilla bean. There you go. Brown sugar, that is interesting to add that additional brown sugar in there. Uh, Joe Zook and a bunch of Hungry Hollow are doing some great stuff. You certainly can't feel that brown sugar on the nose, though. You really can. Uh, I really feel a lot of the vanilla bean as well. Just my chair there a little bit. There we go. Uh, you know, uh, again, but you do feel some chocolate notes. There's no chocolate per se in the beer, but you certainly feel some chocolate notes. Rich porter, I used your bourbon barrels, vanilla bean, and brown sugar. Yeah, I mean, you certainly can feel some chocolate notes in there. Feel a lot of the bourbon barrel notes. They certainly get a lot of vanilla. Even though it was Asian vanilla beans, I don't know, you know, you're getting some from the vanilla bean. You certainly are, are, are feeling some vanilla from the barrel as well. With the addition of some caramel notes from the bourbon barrel. Ah. Oh. Damn, that, that's good. That, that's pretty tasty, man. Yeah, that's good. Where, where sometimes beers like this go wrong is, is that they add too much. They become too sweet, too cloying. Um, and they don't finish. This one has the potential to do that, especially with the addition of the you know, the vanilla bean and the brown sugar. Uh, and there is a lot of sweetness. Don't get me wrong. You certainly feel some brown sugar. You feel a lot of molasses from, from that brown sugar is what you really feel. And yet somehow it cleans up, dries up very nicely. You're, you're, you're left with very slight lingering toffee notes, uh, but it, it's not too much. Uh, uh, it's, it's gorgeous because uh, you really do feel those bourbon notes. Again, uh, in the form of caramel, a lot of vanilla. Vanilla both from the bean and then from, from the barrel, which comes at you at two different places on the palate. The vanilla bean attacks you right in the middle, whereas... As the vanilla from the barrel, you feel right, right near the end. But I'm intrigued at how, how it finishes nice and oaky dry. Uh, yeah, I'm very intrigued. I'm very intrigued, man. <laughs> wow, that's pretty good. I haven't, uh, you know, I was buying a lot of Joe's stuff for a while there, but I kind of got away from it for, for, for no other reason than, uh, you know, uh, I, I was opting for more... Um, I don't know if approachable is the right word, but yeah, you know, six-pack beer, you know, especially during the summer. But now as we're going into those cold winter months, I was really kind of feeling it when I saw this one, uh, the, the Imperial, uh, the barrel, Bourbon Barrel Aged Imperial IPA, and then this one, I had to pick them up. 
because it has been getting colder and I was very curious. And, 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 and to be honest with you, this is Joe's home run swing. Now he's taking uh, swings at other beers. He's doing them very well, but but this is what Joe does. I mean, uh, out of the box, Joe knocks them out of the park, man. Very rich and decadent. Uh, yeah, again, I feel a lot of a lot of cocoa notes. Almost more, more. I said chocolate earlier, but it almost feels more like baking cocoa than 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 you know than, than say a chocolate bar. If that makes sense to you. I feel like I'm getting some very dark raisin notes as well, uh, and that could just be me because you don't typically get fruit from a beer like this. But I'm kind of feeling the raisin. And I think that's, that's due to, to the sweetness, right? Uh, uh, it gives it that fruit-like quality, I suppose. Um, it was kind of reminding me of, of Mother's, uh, of the beer formerly known as MILF. Uh, <laughs> that, that one, that, that, you know, the, the bourbon barrel version, anyway, is kind of what, almost what it felt like there for a second. Oh, this is absolutely gorgeous. I mean, if you ever get a chance to get into Cassville, uh, go, go visit Joe and a bunch out there. Joe and his wife uh, are very nice folks. Uh, Joe's doing some great stuff out there. I would like to see Joe do, you know, uh, for lack of a better word, uh, uh, six pack beers, you know, just 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 you know, nice, approachable, drinkable beers. But I mean, I don't know. I mean, if it ain't broke, don't fix it, right? Uh, this is kind of what Joe does. I mean, Joe Joe likes a big AV, ABV. Joe likes a big, complex beer, and you know, I mean, it, it's what he does, and, and he does it better than anybody, in my particular opinion, or as well as anybody. I guess uh, might be a better way to put that. I mean, it, it is a destination brewery. It'd have to be because it's out there in the middle of no place. Well, it might not be in the middle of no place, but you can see it from... <laughs> it's there, man. I mean, you know, you have to be trying to seek it out or find it by accident. Uh, it is b between, you know, I, here in Springfield, Missouri, uh, it, it is on my way if I'm heading to northwest Arkansas, you know, if I'm heading into Rogers. Or Bentonville, you know, you've got to take that road out there. Uh, but you've got, to, but to get to where the brewery, to get to Cassville, but to get to where the, his brewery is, I mean, you really have to get off the beaten path. I mean, so even me, the first time I went out there, I'm going, oh, are, we, are you sure we're going around? I mean, I'm relying on my GPS. And, and I think my GPS was going, are you sure this is where you want to go? <laughs> yeah, because it's out there. You're looking around going, holy crap, you know. <laughs> You start to hear the theme song from Deliverance, man. You're going, oh, mercy. <laughs> Hope nobody asked me to squeal like a pig, man. Anyway, uh, yeah, but but it, it, is, it is worth the trip. Uh, from Springfield, it's about an hour and a half if you're coming from my neck of the woods. But it is definitely worth the trip. It, it isn't, um, I'm trying to think how far it is from, gosh, I was trying to uh, re remember. So I, I used to work out, out there in, in Northwest Arkansas. I, I worked for Saddlebach, which is in Springdale, but my territory was, was uh, Benton County. So I did Rogers and Bentonville, and I uh, saw so Carroll County, which is Eureka Springs. So uh, even though the, the actual brewery was in Springdale, I actually only got to Springdale about once a week. So I spent all my time there. And it's about an hour drive from Rogers into Springdale, so it's not like they're next door to each other. Bottom line, it's a damn fine beer. It's pretty freaking amazing, to be honest with you. Yeah, I mean, it, it, it's as good as any barrel-aged beer on the market, and, and it may be better uh, than any. Uh, 
just because of the, the sheer complexity of the beer. I, I think I could I could drink this. I, I could drink uh, you know one bottle a day for a week and come up with a different different aroma and, and, and different flavor. It really is that complex. It is put together extremely well because that is what Joe Zuka does out there. Hungry Hollow is just. It's just impeccable. So there you go. I am Tom the Beer Whisperer. Beer Evangelist, political drink of Prevera was a man. Uh, you thought I was going to slam it in you. All right, good guy. Cheers, y'all.